Lawyers of Reddit, what are the craziest, yet legal, last will and testament stories you had to deal with? I worked at an attorney office and little older lady gave her house and her belongings to a bus driver. The bus driver was nice to her, and would help her, we were all waiting for hell to break loose, when her family found out. My brother used to be a paralegal, and he said that a group of three siblings, I believe two brothers and a sister, almost came to blows, because the inheritance didn't divide into three evenly, there were two pennies left over. Not a lawyer, but paralegal. We had a dying client in hospital, change her will by recording it on a smartphone. It set a precedent, and made the local paper, the lawyer in question, has the page from the newspaper friend in his office. Two sons of really wealthy couple go to the family lawyer to have the will read. Lawyer is super nervous. He has known them both since they were kids. One son gets the entire inheritance and the other gets nothing. The explanation was that it should be passed through to blood relatives only. So that was the day he found out he was adopted. Edit. A lot of people asked what happened. I only heard of this through a friend, so I don't have the full story, but the reason it went to a lawyer, the person I know, was that it was being contested, so the disinherited son had to contest. I believe over the amount, not that his brother wasn't willing to give him anything. Crazy. I work for a lawyer who does wills. We've had a lady put in her will that one of her adult sons was not to receive a share until he visited a dentist and the other son lost 70 lbs. Another lady put in her will that she wanted her cats cremated with her when she died. Told her that's not going to happen. Human remains and animal remains do not get cremated at once. So she settled on cremated separately and joined together, then buried together. Typically wills are about 10 pages for the average person. We had a lady who had a 56 page will. She detailed everything from her house to people wooden ladle to, toilet paper holder to, magazine basket to, etc. For every single item in this lady's house. We had a man put in his will that his family was to go to the zoo immediately after his burial that day. We thought that was more heartwarming. We had a lady that told us to put in her will that she wanted to be buried on her property next to her husband. She lived on a small rural property, totally illegal to have human remains buried there, refused to tell us whether her husband was cremated or not, and had dictated that she did not want to be cremated. Edit. Her husband had died 5 or 6 years prior. So it's not as though it was 50 years where things like that may have been a little overlooked. We work with many people from a certain religion. A lot of people we do wills for leave at least 90% of their estates to the church instead of their families. I was in rehab with a guy whose grandmother left him to 5 million dollars if he could quit heroin for 2 years. He would have to wear one of those drug patches that the courts use for probationers the entire time which are exceptionally hard to fool. 5 million dollars? Slam dunk, right? This was 2007. Last time I saw him was in 2013, nor did the f asterisk asterisk k out in a flea bag motel, while I left to pick up another sack. I got arrested, made the decision to quit, and never saw him again. Who knows, maybe since then he's cleaned up. The local newspaper ran a story with pictures of a house that was left to a cat when the owner died. The cat was the only occupant, the woman's lawyer maintained the house for the cat from the deceased owner's trust fund. I always wondered if there might have been a little motivation to hasten Kitty's demise. There's a famous UK case. One of the richest men in the world at the time died during the journey between his solicitor and his country estate, all because he forgot his glasses. Took lawyers just over 100 years to spend the entire estate in legal fees. The name of the case escapes me. I was a witness to one where the lady wanted to make sure her daughter divorced her husband when she had no intentions of doing so, if she wanted her part of the estate. Thankfully that is not legally enforceable so nothing came from it. My dad is a lawyer and a friend of my grandpa, who was in his 80s and had end stage cancer made his will. He was a big fan of weapons and wanted to give them to my dad, has a fan too. He left him two shotguns, a Glock and a revolver. 
My dad told him it would be better to write it in the will, because my country's law says you can only own 5 weapons at a time. My dad had already 4 at the time, so he would have to give some up. But if you inherit them, it doesn't add to the limit. So they made a testament and he gave him the weapons except for the revolver, because it was his favorite, and didn't want to give it away yet. My dad instantly knew why, but didn't say anything. Two weeks later the guy shot himself, with a revolver. He still hasn't got the revolver, because police still has it. He never told my grandpa that he knew, but he didn't want to take this guy's chance of ending his life on his own terms instead, if waiting for the cancer to win. I saw a couple giving $100,000 to the next caretakers of their pets. Not a lawyer, but that's the craziest I saw from our clients. Not the lawyer, but worked in the wills and trusts part of a financial firm. Conditional trusts slash wills about the trustee having to be clean and sober to receive their money were pretty normal, but the weirdest one I saw was a guy who wanted to set up a trust that said his daughter could only receive monthly payment from the trust he'd set up if she remained below a certain, quite low, weight. He was setting it up while still alive, but it was a perpetual trust, so that rule would stay in place after he died. I can't imagine having such a controlling parent that they feel the need to dictate how much I weigh from beyond the grave. Not a lawyer, but when my dad was growing up there was this little old lady across the street without any family. She was from Finland and her husband died during WW2. She immigrated to the states and had no one. So my grandparents would knock on her door to chat, take her grocery shopping, etc. They made my dad and brother help out around her house slash yard etc. She loved my dad and uncle, treated them like her own kids, cookies, and treats and presents. When dad was in Vietnam, she would record him voice messages on tapes and send them to him with letters telling him what life was like in the neighborhood and how she hoped he'd be home so soon, that she prayed for him etc. When he came home, he'd stop by to chat and help out around the house, bring her macaroons and just sit and talk for a while. One day Ms. Lingard died, and a lawyer called my grandparents. She had left them a sizable amount of cash and stock, and her, paid off, house to my dad and his brother. My family had thought she was penniless. Never underestimate how much little simple things can mean to people. You just might be one of the best things in their life. I have a grandpa who set up his will to divide his estate between his and his wife's. He remarried. Families. Pretty normal so far. Stupid part is that, rather than splitting his half between the three children, he did per capita, to be distributed after his wife passes. So we currently have a 9 way split, and likely 10 to 15 ways before it's actually settled. This family didn't realize I had nothing to do with the will. One kept telling me to tell the deceased they were unhappy with their decisions. Another thanked me personally for gifting them the house. Not so much the original will itself, but the aftermath and greed of the siblings. Almost none of them talk anymore, 10x total. They're fighting over a couple hundred acres most of which is swamp. The greed part is they had the original will amended. Every grandkid was supposed to get a portion in the original will along with the siblings. However the siblings next that via courts, they were going to then split the property among themselves, but the executor just didn't give a ref asterisk asterisk k and let it sit for 30 years without doing s asterisk asterisk t. The rest wanted it done so court cases, massive debts, finally the executor no longer has control. Thanks to the court cases the property was in massive debt, which is sort of paid off right now, and now they are all too old or dead to do anything with it. If the will had gone through as originally stated, the family which consists of about 35 grandchildren would have all been happy there, or had money for selling the property which is worth about 35k a lot. Now it's probably just going to go under eventually for non-payment. Even if I could buy some of it for cheap I'm not touching it with 100 mile pole. Iron all but my school lucked into its art museum. Because of William Ackland's crazy will, he donated a ton of money to Duke for an art museum. Asterisk o the condition that he be buried in the museum. Duke noped out of that little clause and the money, so unhappily accepted the gift, built the Ackland Art Center, and you can go see his tomb right there in it. I enjoy sharing this fun little piece of trivia when I give tours. Steady Ed Hedrick, the inventor of the frisbee had his ashes melted into some frisbees. 
just a guy who grew up in California throwing the things. I read a will that was pretty normal up, until the decedent asked that his cremated ashes be sprinkled on the crotches of well-endowed teenage boys. Maybe he was trying to be funny. Not a lawyer, but I have a crazy story. My grandma's sister was a narcissist and extremely vindictive. She and her husband gained a significant number of assets over the years, including a somewhat profitable farm with over 100 acres of fields. They had a few children, all boys, and they all had wives and children of their own. Her husband died about 6 years before she did. Somehow, in their 50 plus years of marriage, and living on said farm, had they never bothered to go to a lawyer, and write a will. Instead, she wrote a note, and left it in their safe of legal documents saying, that nothing was to go to, wife of son who died almost 20 years ago, or her children, and said aunt's grandchildren. This, because the son's wife was more outspoken and well wouldn't be controlled by her. Aunt absolutely despised her, and my entire family too. So everything went into probate and the kids are still trying to get everything squared away a year later, but the people she wanted excluded, should be getting something out of it too. My grandpa gave all his belongings to my father, which was the youngest of four brothers and three sisters, while my grandma was still alive. Grandpa told my dad that he gave him everything rightfully because he believed my dad will split everything equal. Grandma wanted her property back, dad at the time only 20 obeyed his mom. Big f***ing court case several years later between all the brothers because it was indeed not evenly split. Still going strong to this day with no grandma around anymore. Grandpa was a wise man, just miscalculated. There was a case, story from someone who was in law school, of a generational trust. This says all my grandchildren get dollar sign when the youngest reaches the age of 25. The youngest grandchild was 24, and they were all making plans for their inheritance. Plot twist. One of the sons remarried, and had a baby, a new heir, when the other grandchildren were 24. So they had to wait, until they were 50 plus to inherit. Edit. I asked if the baby had a bodyguard, and my friend didn't know. I think one of the grandchildren was in law school, and was a classmate of my friend, who told me the story. This was in the 1990s I believe. There is a show called The Will that is all about this kind of stuff for anyone interested. When I was in law school a professor of mine told me about her brother had been left 800, 000, 1 million dollars by a pensioner at the church, where he was a vicar. Obviously the family contested it, but being the monastic man he was he wanted to keep it. A relative from my dad's side, didn't get married slash have a life, to care for her sick mother. She lived with her, while all her five siblings went to live their lives, and got their own homes. They all said, throughout their lives, that when the mother died this daughter would get the house, since she was the only one caring for her. When the mother died all the siblings got their share, she didn't have any money to buy hers, so she was literally thrown out on the street. After caring for their mother all her life, and despite all of them having their own homes. Make sure to like and subscribe for more daily content. Thanks for watching.